The River Foyle carves a wide path through the city of Londonderry, dividing it in two. It's a rough generalisation, but near enough true that one side of the city is for Protestants, the other for Catholics. On this side, the bog side, you don't say Londonderry, it's Derry, and nowhere can you escape the harsh reminders of trouble. Above the bog side is the Cregan Estate, and that's where Bloody Sunday happened in 1972. The Cregan Estate is where Charlie Nash has spent most of his 28 years. He's been boxing since he was a boy, and today he's a city celebrity, and that goes for both sides of the river. If he beats Watt, they'll either give him the freedom of Derry or rename it Nashville. He no longer lives on the Cregan Estate. He's taken his wife Betty and their two young children to a smart bungalow further out. Were you born right in the middle of the city? Yes, as a matter of fact, this is actually, this was the street where I was born here, Joseph Street. Uh, now they have big flats, you know, the street has been knocked down. And when you see those flats, that Joseph Street ran down there. When did your parents move up to the Craigan Estate? Uh, well, we moved up to the Craigan Estate when I was about seven years old. I would say I was about uh, the 21 years ago, and we've lived in Craigan ever since. We had a fairly happy time in Craigan, you know, it was just ordinary council houses. We had 13 of a family, my mother and father was 15, and it was a three-bedroomed house, so you can understand it was a wee bit tight for so many of a family, but to, to get a house in them days was, it was pretty good, you know. The family had that terrible tragedy, didn't they, when your brother was killed? Yes, that's right. Yeah, it was a bad time for, for, for our family. But especially for everybody in Derry, there was actually 13 people killed in Body Sunday. And it was a bad time for everybody. There was a lot of people involved in the Troubles, and there was a lot of people hurt through the Troubles. Were you in the city at that time when he was killed? No, I wasn't. No, I was in boxing. I was boxing in Dublin that particular weekend. I was away Friday, Saturday, and was coming back Sunday when I heard about what happened. Your father was also, he was injured, wasn't he, in the side? Yes, he was, yeah. My father was shot in the arm on the side. You know, he was, he seen my brother, Wally, falling at one of the, 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 the street corners and he run over to find out what was happening. And now uh, when he went over, he was shot. So he fell, but he got up and put his hands out, you know, to say, stop shooting. And he was shot again in the arm, you know. That was, that was one of those things, you know. How people, people never expected that to happen. Well, that sort of upset me for a few months and then, you know, just to forget about what happened, I started training again and it sort of helped me forget about what happened, even though, like, that's something you never forget about. <laughs> your fans. <laughs> I hope we can get past now. <laughs> well, it shows the sort of support you've got, Charlie. Blocking the traffic. You better not get out. There'll be a few hundred autographs to say there. Oh, once you stop, you're fat. <laughs> on. You've made their day, Charlie. <laughs> so this is what one of your two pubs that we're yes, going to. Yes, yes. Uh, I'm hoping to buy the the bar outright uh, as soon as I beat Jim Watt because I'll have the money then. I thought it was worthwhile investing some money in the bar, and hopefully by beating Jim Watt, I'll probably buy the bar outright myself. And the other one you do own, do you? Yes, the other one is called the Sportsman. I do own that myself. Do you spend much time in the in the pubs? Well, usually for maybe about an hour in the morning, I would travel between the different ones and for an hour at night. But if I wasn't training for a fight, I would spend maybe three or four nights actually working. Do you what you serve drinks there, do you? Oh, yes, yeah. What do you think of what? A good boy. Good boy. Do you want money now? Right. No, no, no. What do you know no. about boxing? No, what do you know about boxing? Well, I expect the customers, they expect to see you. I mean, well, this Charlie is Nash Bar, they expect to see Charlie Nash. They expect, well, a lot of people actually come in and they won't let anybody else serve them. They want to be served by me. <laughs> Is this where you uh, come and do your road work, Charlie? Yeah, I would usually park my car here in this street, maybe early morning. You know, it depends how I feel. Some, some mornings I might lie on, get up about 8 o'clock. Uh, some mornings I get up maybe 6.30 and do it. Pretty hilly, you must find the old legs out of it. Uh, well, that's, that's why I picked this road. You know, there's other roads in Derry, but they're mostly either all downhill or they're pretty straight. This one is up and down, up and down for about three miles. 
Now, no matter which way you're going, it's the same thing, actually. Then, so when you get out here, you have a great view of the mountains as well. I think the air out here and the country is very, very good. Nash has never pulled up his boxing roots. He still trains on the Cregan Estate with St Mary's, the amateur club that got him started. He won five Irish titles and boxed in European and Olympic championships. He didn't go pro until 1975, when he was 24. The St Mary's amateurs delight in sparring with the man who in a day or so may be world champion. He's already won the British and European lightweight titles, just as Watt did. And like Watt, he's a southpaw, not a heavy puncher, but a beautifully fast and elegant mover. In December, he beat Ken Buchanan. Buchanan is the Scot who kept Jim Watt in the shade for years, and by beating him, Charlie Nash forced himself into contention. His trainer is Tommy Donnelly, who's looked after him since Charlie's early days, another example of the Nash loyalty. On the evidence I saw in Derry, Nash is spectacularly fit, and he's going to be no pushover for what? He punishes himself in the gym twice a day, and part of the routine is a vigorous round of circuit training, which not many boxers do. Nash goes about it with deadly efficiency. We've been doing circuit training from I was about uh, 12 years old and I've never given it up because I think it's good. It's a change from punching bags and skipping and sparring. I think at the end of the night's training when you're actually pushing yourself onto something strange like a circuit, you're using different muscles, you're doing different exercises, you're doing it mostly for speed and then at the same time it's building up that extra bit of stamina because you're actually doing it after you finish training. You must have been really tremendously pleased when you got this chance. Did you ever think you'd get the, the chance of a world title shot? Not really. When, when uh, I was to fight Jim Watt for the British title uh, three, four years ago, when he refused to come to Derry, I understood at that time that the troubles were, uh, were they probably affected Jim Watt because there's a lot of sports people who refused to come to Northern Ireland, even though a lot of sports people happened to come here, like Brenton Foster, Lytton Rees, John Lowe. We had some uh, big names here. Did you ever consider moving away from this district with all its problems and go and train somewhere else or have you always been determined to stay here and do it? Uh, well, it's been mentioned by different people that I should move away, but I've always been a happy person at home. I love Derry as a city, it's a beautiful city, and the people, as I say, everybody knows Charlie Nice. I know everybody else. I'm happy at home, uh, we all get on well together. I'm happy in the club, St Mary's, they've done all they could over 17 years to help me in my boxing career. If you win, what do you think the city of Derry will do? Well, I think it'll be unbelievable. I, I, I don't think I could put it in words, you know, how the city will feel, but I think it'll be great for 100% for of the community. They'll be just all, all out uh, singing for joy, and I think it'll be terrific. It's unbelievable. It will be unbelievable, you know, when it does happen. <laughs> 